however the density i'm sorry um however the density of um water is higher than this and again wood is the same example that i was giving of um cork that it um let's just say if we have a wood that is made up of uh if we have a cork that is made up of wood with density 400 um then obviously it is going to sink on water however if it's uh, made up of some wood that has density of 1200 meter, uh, kilogram per meter cube then it's going to settle down so there is also uh, some ranges of different types of wood different types of glass different types of steel different types of polythene and then we have metals or heavier solids um, in these cases you can see that their uh, values uh, are much 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 larger than those of water so you obviously expect them to sink in the bottom uh, if you see a general trend you can see that the solids have higher density and then we have liquids with you know around the range of 1700 and then we have gases with ranges of points or units numbers 1.29.029 so that's basically a general trend but you can have different um, exceptions as again i'm referring to the exception of ice and water that ice is however solid but again still its uh, density is lesser than that of water moving forward values of density now these are some facts uh, about density and there are some general trends that we need to know uh, in order to keep your concept clear so uh, many materials have a range of density some types of wood for example are less than, the, than water and some of them are denser than water now density measurements um, density measurements there are different ways to measure density and it depends on what exactly we are talking about um first of all let's just say we are talking about a simple regularly shaped solid the mass is found on a balance and the volume is by measuring its dimension by a ruler um now how, how do how do we measure the volume of an object to measure the volume of a regularly shaped object, we have some formulas. Um, we have some formulas that are listed over here. And if you will look at them, uh, let's just say in a regularly shaped object, you have um, this prism that is um, that is a cross section of a triangle. Then this is the formula for it. This is the cylindrical formula for it it is is the formula for a cone and this is for a pyramid so so on uh, and even if you have an object that, that does not have shape like these there are uh, multiple techniques that you're going to study in, in maths or um, that are basically used to determine the volume of regularly shaped objects so this is the, basically the method that you're going to adopt that if you have, you're asked to find the density of a regularly shaped solid just take the mass of it just put it on a digital mass balance because you need some accuracy and you cannot just use a comparison mass balance it is it is much preferred to uh, use a digital weight scale or a balance so you use that you get the mass of the that specific object and then you use these formulas to get the volume so next topic is that of irregularly shaped solid so irregularly shaped solids such as a pebble or a glass topper the mass of a solid is found by balance again the masses of solids are again and again be used by balances or by scales so if you use a digital scale you're going to find the mass of the balance and then its volume is measured by one of the methods shown in these figures this is the first figure and then this is the second figure if you recall back in the initial lecture the first one the first one um the volume of the object can, of an irregularly shaped object could be easily found by the displacement of some liquid that is it, that it is immersed into um in the first figure the volume is the difference between the first and second readings and then the second figure is the volume of the water collected in the mirroring cylinder so this basically tells us how to find the volume of an irregularly shaped object that you immerse it in and so you initially find the 
volume of the uh, liquid that was in the beaker or whatever measuring cylinder that you're using depends on what precision you are wanting and then um and then after that you immerse that object using a thread or a very uh, precise manner just drop it or something just make sure that there is less um, splash back uh, in that beaker or measuring cylinder and then you note the change in volume or the final va volume if you have the fin final volume and then you take a difference between the initial volume and now the the second reading and that basically gives you the volume that the object has displaced in the water and hence that is the volume of that object so moving forward we have talked about the uh the basically the technique how we are going to find the shape sorry the density of regularly shaped solid and then the irregularly shaped solid now what about if an object is not solid and it is liquid so again the mass of an empty beaker is found on a balance a known volume of liquid is transferred from a burette or a measuring cylinder into a beaker. The mass of the beaker plus liquid is found in the mass of the liquid is obtained by subtraction. So this is pretty simple again that um, uh, you, in this case, uh, the volume measurement or calculation is pretty simple that you just add some known volume of water, or sorry, of that medium um, in a beaker or a measuring cylinder or even a burette if you are going for more precision um, and then you know down that val value however when you are going to measure the mass of that liquid you take the mass of an empty beaker or the burette or whatever the instrument it was in and then you add that specific liquid in it and then you measure the volume again so uh, and then you subtract the mass of empty beaker or empty burette whatever you had or whatever um, instrument you are using and that gives you the volume of sorry the mass of the liquid so that gives you the mass volume is known so you divide mass by volume and gives you simple liquid okay air using a balance the mass of 500 centimeter cube round bottom flask full of air is found and again after removing the air with a vacuum pump the difference gives the mass of air in the flask the volume of air is found by filling the flask with water and pouring it in a volume into a cylinder Again, in this, you need some proper suction technique to make sure that uh, it's just air inside and it is properly the volume is um, the mass is in this case because the mass of air that you are going to calculate is going to be very, very small. Hence, we, as we already know, that uh, the uh, density of air is 1.29 kilograms per meter, which is very, very, very less. And I mean, it should be less because we live in air and it shouldn't constrict us. So um, this basically tells us that um, you should have a very, very, very precise mass uh, balance or a weight balance or uh, whatever you're using to measure the ba a mass. And then, um, or you can also use a very huge amount of volume. So there is some substantial weight that can be measured because if there is uh, less weight, then ob obviously, um, you know, uh, there would be more uh, more room for errors. Um, but if there there is more weight, then there would be you know a substantial value that can be calculated. So this is again a simple technique. Now this is basically the summary of whatever we have done related to density. So I'll just go over it once. Density that can be denoted by a d or rho. Rho that is given over here. This this symbol. Uh, it is equal to mass divided by volume. This is basically the concept. Density of a liquid can be used by placing mirroring cylinder on balance add liquid read on mirroring cylinder uh, that is equal to volume change in mass on balance is equal to m and then you just put the values in and that's how you get the density density of a solid again two techniques that you have a regular solid you have an irregular solid finding the volume of solid to find out the volume of solid of a regular object use mathematical formula and to find out the volume of an irregular object put object into a mirroring cylinder with water and the rise of Water is the volume of object. Mass, use a balance. An object will float in a fluid if its density is lesser than that and it will sink if it's greater than that. Example of that is that of a needle or a cork and then this is also a very very amazing example of um, what do you call it? Uh, orange, a peeled orange and a simple orange and one of and even if you don't think about this um, you can like I, I'm sure you must know that um, initially when we have an egg 
and we put it on boiling it sinks in the in in the in the bottom of the pan or saucepan whatever we're using to boil it but however uh, once it's, it's boiled we know that it is boiled when it floats on top and when it comes at top so that basically does it its, its density has changed and it's then it's it's less dense after being boiled this is a similar example of that of an orange that when it is peeled it has a higher density and when it is not peeled uh, it has a lower density or you know sorry i guess vice versa when it is peeled it has a higher density and when it is not peeled it has a lower density so there is that um that's it for the density 